Hey, thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're going to talk about the belief of it's impossible to keep from sinning. This is a belief that I have witnessed pop up repeatedly in multiple Christian circles. It's not necessarily a belief that is in all Christian circles, but it definitely is a common one. And I wanted to talk about it in a few different ways. First off, this is a teaching that I heard a while back that was actually being taught at a Christian school. And that is, can you imagine doing something other than sinning for one second? Now, can you imagine keeping from sinning for one second? You know, are you sinning right this second? Okay, so can you imagine doing something other than sinning for five seconds? You know, this five seconds right now, are you sinning? Okay, well, what about 15 seconds? You know, 15 seconds is just a brief series of those previous building blocks. I mean, if we can keep from doing it for one second, it's just a, a series of seconds that we're not sinning. So if you can do it for 15 seconds, can you imagine doing it for one minute, doing something other than sinning for one minute. One minute is just a series of those chunks. Now what about one hour? One hour is just a series of minutes. Can you imagine doing something other than sinning for one hour? If you can do that, what about one day? This is something to consider. It's a frame that is generally not taught. It's definitely an uncommon view amongst most Christian circles. It's not something that is readily accepted in most cases. And there's another frame that I want to put around this issue. Let's talk about it kind of in a, in a corollary way, talking about a different issue. Let's say that we're talking about a heroin addict say that they have been in the habit of taking heroin repeatedly and they might have felt guilty at one time or another or they may feel guilty after every time they do it but they still are in the habit of doing it and then eventually for whatever reason they end up in a Narcotics Anonymous or some similar recovery group but imagine if the expert in that recovery group came up there, the perceived expert, and he told the person, it is impossible for you to keep from taking heroin. It's impossible for you to maintain your sobriety. You should not even try to maintain your sobriety. Now, you might think at some point that you're doing all right, that you've been, you know, doing good. You're not, uh, you haven't taken any in a while, but just know that it's coming. Like right then in that moment, it'll come. You won't be able to keep from it. You will have no ability to stop from taking that heroin in that moment. You are a horrible, horrible addict. You are a terrible addict, and you cannot keep from doing anything otherwise. It is impossible for you to keep from taking heroin all the time, every day, for the rest of your life. It's absolutely impossible, and it's actually immoral for you to even think that you could. It's actually immoral, it's actually a character flaw for you to take that upon yourself. You should not even try to maintain your sobriety because it is impossible and it's morally wrong to do so. And now, maybe you can also imagine, uh, of course, you know what I'm referring to, but you can imagine someone saying, and in some circles this kind of goes on, you should actually be proud of the fact that you're an addict. You should actually be proud of the fact that you shoot up heroin all the time. You should be proud of that because of how it reflects upon, you know, the higher power. Now think about that. Think about what these people are being taught in a lot of Christian churches. They're actually developing it into an issue of identity. They're actually taking it upon themselves as part of their identity. And so in a lot of you know, Christian churches, the pastor, the perceived expert, 
the person that's actually supposed to be there to help guide them in seeking to do what God wants and seeking after God, the person that's up there that's supposed to be doing this is actually teaching people it is impossible to maintain your sobriety. Do you think that that is an enabling belief that it would encourage them to actually try to maintain sobriety, to try to do something other than take heroin all the time? Or do you think that that actually would discourage them? That they would think that, well, uh, I'm in the habit of doing this and, oh, I feel a compulsion to do it. Well, I can't keep from it. So I guess I'll just do it because I, I'm going to do it anyway. I guess I just can't keep from it. It's probably not going to help them. I mean, you might have the rare person out there that decides, well, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to prove you wrong. There might be someone out there that does that. But in general, these people we're talking about are already in the habit of doing something. They're already in the habit of it. They obviously have, you know, a desire to maintain that habit on some level. And so if they're being told, they're being given permission, they're being given an excuse to just go on with that habit or to even make it worse if they wanted. And they're being told that it's actually a bad reflection upon them to do otherwise. So consider that. That's basically what's being taught in a lot of churches. People are being told that it's actually immoral for them to seek to do what God has asked because it is a rejection of the gift according to what the false prophet Paul teaches. And so they're saying that you should not even seek to do what God considers good and right because you can't possibly do it. And now, in the, of course, in the heroin addict example, most of the time, even though addicts tend to surround themselves with more addicts, that the people they associate with tend to also be addicts a lot of times, they probably have someone in their life somewhere, or maybe had someone in their life, that isn't an addict. They probably know someone or know about someone who isn't an addict. In the case of Christian circles, most of the people there, they all believe that same idea. And of course, this isn't the case for all churches, as I said, but a lot of them, they all believe that everyone sins all the time. It's impossible to do anything other than that. And so they don't even have a reference experience for people that seek to do otherwise. People don't know people that are actually seeking to do what God says is good and right in his sight, according to Deuteronomy 12, 28. Most people do not even know about people that do that. They have beliefs that no such thing even exists in some ways. And so they don't have that reference experience to believe otherwise. And so that just reinforces those teachings that much more. And people don't know what is right and wrong to begin with. And that just makes it even worse because they can't even really tell whether that what they are doing is right or wrong because they don't believe in the standard that God set out in his commandments. Most of the time, people don't believe that. They have just some vague idea and they rely more on feelings and social pressure, uh, things they, can, they call conviction and things that they call uh, feeling temptation or guilt and all of these other ideas. They rely on that to tell them what is right and wrong instead of relying upon what God said was good and right in his sight in Deuteronomy 12, 28. And so all of these factors combine and interweave. And on some level, just like that addict, they don't really want to do otherwise. And so that just reinforces it more and encourages them to keep this belief that, you know, oh, I can't keep from doing that thing that part of me wants to do. You know, people obviously, they have a desire on some level to do the thing they consider wrong. Otherwise, they probably wouldn't be doing it. And so if they have that desire, that desire is just reinforced when they give themselves the excuse to pursue after that desire. But the reality is, seeking to do after God's commands is not a futile thing. The commands actually state this. And you can see this readily in the law. It says that, it is not a futile thing. And furthermore, every day we have the choice to decide what are we going to do? Are we going to 
make the deliberate effort to seek to do what God has asked of us? Are we going to choose every single day to do our best? Or are we going to go about every single day believing, oh, today I'm going to mess up. Today I'm going to do the wrong thing and I can't keep from it. There's a quote attributed to Henry Ford, paraphrased. It was, if you believe that you can, or if you believe that you can't, you're right. If you're going about every single day believing, today I'm going to sin, I can't keep from sinning, I'm going to sin all the time, what is that going to set you on the path to do? However, if you do believe that I have the personal responsibility to seek to do what God has asked, that what God has asked is not a futile thing for me, now I'm not going to say that no one is going to ever make, I'm not going to say that a person is never going to make a mistake. I'm certainly not going to say that. But how does that set one's course? If one sets it upon themselves as it's not a futile thing for me to seek after God, to seek to do as he has asked, it's a completely different situation. It's a completely different set of beliefs. It is much more enabling rather than those disenabling beliefs of it's impossible to not sin and you should be proud of the fact that you're an evil person. I, As a Christian, I don't think I would have ever perceived that as being particularly troubling. But now, knowing what I know, I don't really understand with my current mentality why someone would want to believe that. Why someone would want to take it upon themselves to say that, that they are terribly evil and that that's actually a good thing. We should seek to do after what God has asked. We should seek what God has commanded. It is not a futile thing, and it is something that is right in front of us. His commandments that he gave, what is good and right in his sight. That is what we should seek to do. We should choose every day. We have the ability every day to choose, am I going to put forth my effort and my motivation, my will, toward following after what God has asked or not? Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out my other videos where we talk about the commands, where we talk about what specifically God has asked of us. And make sure that we stay in touch so we can continue this conversation. Thanks for watching. Remember the commands. Peace.